Recording? Yes, there we go. It's just a bit slow. Well, good morning and welcome to the November meeting of the Whangaratā Community Board. Hopefully this will be the last community board meeting we have to have with the public not being able to be in the room. Uh, so looking forward to freedom in February, fingers crossed. So, I'll start by calling for apologies. Do we have any apologies? It looks like no. Any conflicts of interest? Oh, sorry, items not on the agenda. There are none and no conflicts of interest. Now I'll move to the public forum. And first up in the public forum, we have Stephen Priestley. Welcome, Stephen. Can you hear us? I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear you. The floor is all yours. Thank, well, you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so this matter relates to Diana Avenue in Whangamata. And um, at, at this forum, I'm representing the residents of um, Diana, Diana Avenue. So an application has been lodged uh, for a 47 dwelling development um, at Barbara Avenue camping ground. In that application, uh, Diana Avenue is proposed to be the main access to the development serving uh, 21 of those dwellings. Now, the residents of Diana Avenue live in a no exit street and enjoy that sense of um, vehicle free environment and a place for our kids and grandkids uh, to roam around. Our main concern one of our main concerns is the loss of amenity values. And I just read out what amenity values means under the RMA, and I'm sure many of you do know, but just to rekindle your um, view of it, amenity values means those natural or physical qualities and characteristics of an area that contribute to people's appreciation of its pleasantness, aesthetic coherence, and cultural and recreational attributes. Are we still there? We're still here. Yeah, we're listening. So it's more than the physical values, such as the number of vehicles. It is more about um, the experiential values, um, something that's a little bit of intangible. Our other concerns is the severing of beach access number six, which raises, we believe, uh, health and safety issues, as well as the loss of recreational values. So the application documentation treats the use of Diana Avenue as a fait accompli. It doesn't look at any other options, even though there is direct access into the site from three road frontages, that those being Barbara Avenue, Beverly Terrace, and St. Patrick's Row. The assessment of environmental effects is written by a surveyor. It draws conclusions like uh, the environmental effects are less than minor, and there are, there are no affected parties. And of course, we are an affected party. They draw these conclusions, even though <coughs> their expert reporting doesn't comment on these effects. For example, the landscaping and the urban design. So what, what do we want from council um, at this point in time? So we, we think the minimum requirement is that the application should be publicly notified so we can make our submission uh, to a commission hearing with the appropriate expert witnesses and the like. I suppose ultimately what we'd like council to do is to refuse the extension of Diana Avenue into the development. And I suppose that request comes because you are the landowner uh, of the facility. Um, the, the, the road reserve for Diana Avenue extends 
into the um, beta axis uh, number six. So beta axis number six is shown on the district plan as a road reserve. Whereas many councils would have put it as, as a recreational reserve, uh, but that's not the case here. So the council through a department within council owns that facility and it would be good to get some feedback on, from council as to how they're thinking about allowing that road reserve to be used as part of this development. Really, thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's that's my presentation. And um, I believe we've probably got a couple of other uh, residents who may be online. They might like to say something. Other than that, we happily take questions. Well, thank you, Stephen. Uh, any questions, members? No, no, no. We're all clear. Okay, no, thank you, Stephen. Um, so, just uh, if any of your colleagues have anything to say, we're welcome to hear from them. We haven't got anybody else. No, there's no one else online. So, no, thank you. That's, um, we understand fully where you're coming from. As I discussed with you in a phone call, uh, it's not something the board actually has the final decision on, but I'm sure your comments have been noted and will be um, passed on to other members of staff. So thank you for your, your time. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Thank you. Next we have... Rob Boston. No, he didn't confirm, I'm sorry. He doesn't it. confirm. That's it for public forum. No other public forum. Okay, so someone like to move? I'll move. Second by the same. All those in favour? Aye. It's carried. We now come to minutes for confirmation from the meeting of the 21st of September. And as Dave pointed out, there's a typo in the recommendation. Um, just makes reference to Tyrell Parunui. Nothing against them, but we don't want to do <laughs> I see that you're in my ways and I have that for much for change. Okay. Um, it's the bill, it. <laughs> so um does anyone got anything else they want to raise apart from that? The Patriot Hall will be brought up some during the, the meeting. That's uh, some comments there that uh, um I'd like to just hear how that's gone. Have you had a chance? Uh, to talk to them for you? No, we can raise that under action schedule. Yeah, we'll be able to that. Um, so, someone like to move those minutes? I'll move. Seeing the by theory. All those in favour? Aye. Uh, it's carried. Right, coming on to item two. Yeah, 2.1 reserves available for licensed commercial operators. Do we have Derek? How oh, do we have Derek? Welcome, Derek. Thank you, Chair. Good morning. Good morning. So I take it that this is an item going to all the boards around the district. Um, to I see we have been asked to identify potential sites for future concessions and also the activities that we'd like to see on them. Is that, that in a nutshell? Uh, that's, that's correct. Okay, so I'll open it up for the discussion. So we've got a list there. That's any members want to throw anything into the pot? Well, is this where we get asked for an increase in the beach roads if we can add two? Yeah, well, yeah, if you want to yeah. make that suggestion. I'd, I'd like to see um, another food um, outlet at Beach Road. Okay. Just that it's becoming extremely popular through the summer with families. Uh, how the rest of the board feel about that? Anyone opposed to that? No, no, I support well, that because there's food a long way from there and yeah, it could work. One I had there it was, um, I'm not sure of the exact name of the reserve, I'm talking uh, Kotuku or Katawai, the reserve that runs along the Tahu. Um, there. Um, I've often seen yoga classes there, and um, presumably that's the sort of thing that would be covered by this. So there's no provision there for activities on that reserve. 
Um, no, this is more, um, so yogas, yoga classes, uh, fitness boot camps, they're covered by another regime. This is more a, um, a permanent or semi-permanent activity, um, such as a surfboard hire or a kayak hire, etc. more commercially orientated. So the yoga classes aren't commercial, even though they charge coin to go there or more than coin? Um, they're covered under an event uh, activity um, regime. So uh, this is, like I say, more akin to um, you're hiring physical equipment or you're, you're getting on board um, a vessel or a vehicle um, or you're um, purchasing some coffee or, or, or hot chips, etc. Okay, right. Terry. Yeah, um, I've just been through, obviously, yesterday with you, Derek, and uh, I made a few uh, added bonds. The idea is this, if we have more than what we need, it's better than having less than what we need. Is that what I understand? Um, so I think what uh, Kay has identified whereby um, you're, you're actually adding on something more than what the officers have recommended, then, then yes, if the board is in agreement with that, that's correct. Okay, so I've uh, added a couple more in there. The, um, um, in terms of the numbers of the sites, like I'm looking at, uh, shall I go through them please? So only Mona Reserve, there was only one activity considered there. Um, and no food. Um, and up on that top, you've got actually location down on the bottom grass area, but there's no access to that. Um, and only because that small bridge. So you're expecting, if you're looking for um, the activity that's on there, would be you've got there at the moment, it is a, uh, a food activity. Uh, no. Um, oh, sorry, a, 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 an activity which is obviously surfboard or something like that, is that right? Some, something along those lines, yes. Right. So what, what, we're, what we're saying is, look, we believe that there's an opportunity, a commercial opportunity here for someone to have some form of higher business there. Um, and that's, yeah, I agree with that too, but I also, up in the top car park, thought there'd be an opportunity sometimes for a coffee car truck or something like that, um, yeah. quite a distance away from the shop. Um, so I, I thought that would be an opportunity there. And then on Beats Access 15, which is the Hini Mile one, I think it's out, is it 15? I think it is. Um, you've just got the uh, kayaks, is that right, you put there? Well, yes, again, the activity type. Yeah. And 11, I just wondered if there was an opportunity for a car to go to either of those places as well. So I'm just thinking about the future that these are really just grass green areas, not unlike Mercury Bay, which talks about transportation on the water and all that through these uh, uh, concessions. So these are just looking at things to add value to what people do when they're there, make, make it convenient and uh, not, over the, not a, a huge commercial activity, really, just a small activity. So I've made a comment on a few of them. Do you want me to, to uh, forward these? Okay. I I have a I have a bit of a problem with the only mana one. Um if you're going to let a, a food truck go in there, that guy struggles in that cafe. He does, but people go up to that top car park. They yeah, I know, know. But, you know, they can walk along and have a coffee at his place. That's really supporting me on the surf, but I don't know. Yeah. Um, can we just take a quick step back? I am just confused at the difference between um, what you're saying are the events because I seem to remember, I think that the Hunt Road Site 2.2, is that where George's Goods currently is? Yeah. Is that the site that George's yeah, Goods is? Yeah. So we approved George's Goods at the same time that we approved the yoga, and that was under events. So. What's the difference? And um, if we're talking about well, we a surfboard hire, then there's a surfboard hire. Yeah, we did. It was the same at the Wellington Hotel. Yeah, but that was under events. Yeah, that's right. 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 Yeah, that's right.
events on reserves, which is what the yogas and the boot camps are, they're done as a reserve concession, which don't come to the board. No, we just get told about them. Yeah. Well, and if we talk about the surfboard hire, we had a big discussion about the surfboard hire at Access 8, but then that's not on here, but then there's other surfboard hire sites that are on here. So yeah. I just, I, there's no clarity on the should problem. Should be one at eight. It should be one at eight. We're from a Matar Surf School. That's uh, weird. Yeah. But the, the, yeah, that's why I think you did right. I mean, we need to put those down to say that yeah. they are places that we um, want these things. Mm. And if it doesn't happen to happen, it doesn't matter. We always yeah. have the opportunity to say, we think there's a good place for it. But we've approved it in the past, so where have we approved it? This is a whole new concept in the direction. The commission yes. consultants come to the board um, when they come up, which is every two years, Derek, two, three years, the commission well, consultants. In the past, but this regime is, is going so at the moment, what we're looking for from the board is a steer as to what sort of activities they want at which particular locations. So the proposal is, is that we go out to tender and identify that, look, Fong Matar has four opportunities for, um, for food and here are the locations. And it has um, 10 activity type uh, locations what are you proposing or what are you prepared to pay for those um, opportunities? And we'll be going out throughout the entire district, um, advertising uh, under the same regime for Mercury Bay, Thames, Coromandel, Tairara, Pawanui, et cetera. Um, so in terms of the longevity of that, um, it's more likely to be a, at a, lo a longer term uh, rather than just the uh, the two years. So the workload for the board would be uh, eased as it would be for officers as well. And um, if we're talking about somebody investing money to um, purchase a coffee cart, then if they're only guaranteed two years, then um, there's a higher risk on their business as opposed to if they're guaranteed four or longer years, then they're more likely to receive the return on their investment over the uh, longevity of that uh, that license. That's what yeah, I've got, I've got an issue with that, as you know, and I, I'm a bit concerned that the Mercury Bay, Mercury Bay model is falling on us, um, and we've discussed this at length at the council, that the, um, the, we're a different type of concession to a full uh, tourist concession. This is just concessions on reserve land to enhance the activity or the support of the people on that land. Yep. So over the two years is a worry for me, uh, Derek, and, and I know you're looking for certainty, but these kind of operators, you know, they're, they're seasonal operators and they, they make their business fluctuates. And um, you know, I don't know how much money they're expecting to collect out of this, but I just see it as more of a, a, a uh, an add-on uh, service that we're providing rather than something that's very commercialised. That's how I feel about it anyway. So. Just through the chain, Derek, I would also think that um, two years, I don't see that it's a problem that they're coming back to the community board after that period of time. And um, at least it gives the opportunity also, if the operator isn't satisfied, for them to uh, stand down from doing it and giving somebody else another opportunity or what if somebody, if one of these companies goes um, belly up over that period of time, how do we replace them? Um, well, that would be then opened up for uh, re-advertising. So if somebody reneges on a licence, then that creates that opportunity again. So when we approved them in May last year, we approved a commercial licence for Access 8. So is that just dropped off this table? It's not on the table. Uh, well, it can be added onto the table if the board wants it onto the table. Well, it should have been wrong. That this, uh, this is supposed to capture everything as it is now. So, so it sounds insane. We'd like to add it back on. So. Yep. So can, can I make a suggestion then, if the board has some uh, reservations, then that um, goes back to the council through Terry and Gary. Um, but if we come back to this spreadsheet, which has just gone back up onto the screen, thank you. And we run through it on a line by line basis and you um, make sure the the entire board is, is behind the numbers and the activity types that are there. 
And then if there's, um, as Tamsin has identified, Beach Access 8 is wanted to be put back in there, put that back in there, whether it's for food or an activity. And then we've got a, con a, a consistent list that the entire board endorses, and then we can take that back to council. OK? OK. Yep. Thank you. Um, so, so Beach Road 2, um, 2 of 2, and with a total of 4. Is that? Yeah. 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 Um, Ray, what do you think, guys? 1. Yeah. Only one activity, no, one food, no activity? No, it's 2. You don't need I it. think that should, I think that could fit in activity. They could do a, a surfboard thing down on the beach here. What about the parking? Well, people are already parking there. Yeah. Oh, I know. I don't think that it's going to have any impact on parking. People are already there. I mean, this is the problem that we had with Island View, is the parking when they surf. Well, I don't think this is the issue. This is whether we want to put something there or not. Well, and we're not actually approving no. the licence now. We're no, just no, we're just thinking that maybe it's going to be yeah. yeah. So I put two there. Are you happy with that? Yeah, I'm, well, I'm not so, well, no, I'd rather not so. It doesn't matter if it's around that one. But no. I'll go for the majority view if you want to. Dave, what do you think? Yeah, I, I think it could stand another one. Okay. So one of each, so that's two. Will, you, will Williamson Park, you've got one activity. One activity only. Correct. And that's cognizant yeah. of um, the. I think. No. Why not? Yeah, because of the, the, the why not? You're doing the, the same thing you're doing. Yeah, yeah. You can't even get in there. And not only that, you don't like it for eight o'clock. Huh. <laughs> and and also, it's, there's a huge range of what it could exactly. possibly be, right? Yeah. So it doesn't necessarily have to be the room. same no. offer. Could be. Oh, well, don't have a truck to go there. Yeah. 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 The people want a food one there, okay. So I think so. Yeah. So we think two there, one of each? Yeah. Island view. We've got food activity. How one come one and one is one? One, one food, one, one activity, and one license. So, so through the chair, what that actually means is that um, your total number at one site is on the right hand column, and it could be either a food or an activity. So, yeah. but what we're suggesting is not both. Right, yeah, that's pretty tight there, so I wouldn't want to have two there either. I well, do. I do. I think it should be an activity. Absolutely. But isn't there why there's a lot of people parked there and there's no coffee or anything? You've got the whole. So but it's there. already used by a commercial operator, isn't it? So then we'd be saying that they could no longer. No, we could have one and one. So it needs to be one and one. Which is two. That would yeah, be expanding the car park. Two operators. Okay. Two, yeah. operators. okay. Yeah. two operators, yep. Yep. Beach access 11. Um, you just got, I don't know which one's 11, which is 11. I shouldn't know. Pippi Road, yeah. Oh, Pippi Road, Pippi no, Road. Yeah. So they got the one activity there. Do you want a food truck there or not? No. no. So one only there. Beach access 15, which is Penny Bar, is it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, one splendid there. One splendid. Just the activity. Yeah. No, no it could be one or one. But one it's not big enough for two. It could be one or one. Yeah, one, one, one. Is that two? No. No. <laughs> it like three. could be one or one. <laughs> either or. It's three. Yeah, it's either or. It's so either or. The nearest explanation. Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, you have one activity there. Yeah. Or one food. Or one food, but and not one. both. Oh, okay. Well, it's not that brief. It's pretty Only Manu Beach, two? No, we haven't done Beach. Oh, okay. I think that should be one, one, two. Yeah, two. 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 Beach eggs, you say? Yeah. One food, one activity. Yes. Yep. yep. Only Manu Beach. One. Two. Activity. I'd go for it. If the, if the food's at the top, yeah. I'd, I'd yeah. be happy with food. I'd go for it. Second one. The by the, by the but it can't be where they've got it marked. No. It has to go well, that's, where the, that's where the surf will be. Yeah. 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 But the food, if it was up the top near the surf club and yeah. the tennis club, it has to be up the top. Sense. Yeah. A poultry reserve I've written down. What do you think there? No. No. Who's going to come out there? Yes. People going walking in the food coffee place there? I'm not sure. The, the residents would. Don't want commercial stuff out there, Terry. Yeah. 
Not me, Mark. Don't make me decide. I'm not. I don't think there's. I don't think there's any. Okay. Otahu. Otahu. I think if we get a two-two. Uh, through, through, the, through the chair, if I may, um, we just need to be cognizant of some of these sites um, checking with the reserve management plan that they are uh, suitable, that there is no uh, cultural issues. So when you are mentioning Otahu, that's sort of ringing a few uh, alarm bells with me. Uh, I'd certainly need to check that one up. Um, and likewise, possibly for Opotery at the, um, you know, where the, where the toilet and car park are as well. No, we're not going to Opotery. Opotery's not uh, doing anything. I don't think we need them. Yeah. The Otahu, not the code 2 to me, but up at the other. Where the toilets are. Where the toilets are. No, the toilets are. You can't have anything there. Can't have anything there. We have extra picnic tables there. Yeah. Remember? Yeah. Yeah. No, I think we just leave that, I think. I think we leave that. <laughs> now, another thing, Derek, in the report, it talks about three, five, or ten years possible terms. Um, my thought is that when, if you're going to wait the system, my, my personal thought is if you do it three years, which is the term of a community board, if they continue to exist, um, then that would mean that every um, board would have the chance to revisit this every three, once a term, rather yeah. than five or ten. If it was ten, then the board has no visibility of it at all over the course yeah. of their um, tenure. So, my my suggestion, I don't know if we can add it as a recommendation, but the um, the term be set at three years. Um, it's, it's not a bad idea. So this is what I, I said a little bit earlier. Can, maybe that's the the forum for you to interject that into the councillors via Terry and Gary. We can't make it part of our recommendation. Uh, well, I suppose you could, um, yeah. but they would uh, be your advocates uh, for that recommendation. What do you think, Gary? Um, well, I'm. I'm sort of a, a little bit uh, uncertain in the, in the situation. It's it, probably I need to have a bit of a chat with Terry um, about this. Okay, well, I would like to move that as a third recommendation that the board recommends to council that the term be three years for um, licenses. I, I see that. that, yeah, well. What what if one of the people says, well, I I only want one year or two years? Are, are they going, are going to say, what are you going to say to that? Well, then it comes up again. I would think if nobody else was wanting that site, then after the one year, they would have the opportunity of a continuing or forfeiting, and then it would be put back up. To somebody else. Well, Derek, what, what's your response to Is that? Is that how that works, Derek? Uh, I, I believe Kay's got it in a nutshell. So, um, if someone reneges or forfeits the uh, the site, then that becomes an, an an opportunity for someone else, which is then re-advertised, but at a shorter term. Yeah. Yeah. But at the moment, it's the uh, July 2020 to June 2022. So we have an opportunity to feed in based on what's happened over the two-year period that we approved them. Mm -hmm. So if it's a three-year term for the commercial concessions, a new community board is coming in with potentially no prior knowledge of previous applications or success. And But there are complaints that come in if someone's not happy. But depending on when it falls in the term, you're losing that experience and having approved them and then seeing how they performed. Yeah, but it's just the same anyway, isn't it? Derek, it was, has this come about because of Metri Bay wanting to have a better, a better control over their tourist licensees? Uh, well, it's come about partly as a, um, so prior to the LTP, uh, there was a workshop around um, a whole lot of things such as wharf fees, uh, boat ramps, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So uh, this is a fallout from one of those workshops, Terry. So it's not just from Mercury Bay. 
but the regime um, has, I suppose, been pushed along as it was, adding another year or adding another two years on. And it, it, this is an attempt at trying to, uh, yeah. rather than just push it on and, and, and put a, a Band-Aid on the situation, but actually create a new regime, which is fairer for the operators, because at the moment, the way it works is that they say, we would like to go into location A, and that's not necessarily a suitable site, but as officers, we need to present that to uh, the community board with our recommendations. Here, what we're identifying is these sites are suitable, we believe suitable sites, and we're prepared to offer them for X number of years, and we believe that a coffee cart is suitable here or a, a, a surf uh, board hire is, is here as well. What are you prepared to offer for that um, opportunity? Yeah, um, but Derek, but we've got the problem now with COVID. We don't know what's going to happen in the future. It might well be that huge numbers of people that would normally come to the Thames Coromandel District will not be able to come. Uh, we just don't know. And, and committing people now, I think we need to wait and see when, what's going to happen with COVID. Well, I don't think we can afford to wait and see if, if it's coming up for availability and we've got the opportunity to say three years. I think that's what we should do because I wouldn't like to see a five or a ten year for an operator to go to one spot. I don't think that's fair. No, I think we're I'm hearing what both sides are doing, but it was quite clear at the meeting at council that teams like us who were just leasing pieces of green grass for people to use for concessions wasn't like using an operator out of a, um, a glass bottle boat, etc. like that. So I hear what you say, Derek, and I, I accept that three years is most probably the right right action for it, but um, it, it concerns me that it's going to be pushing more about are you going to put power on if they want power, are you going to put power in for them? Are we going to put water in for these people if they take a five or six year deal? Yeah, you know, these are the kind of questions that are going to come up, aren't they? They want, they want more. Um, possibly, and the, they uh, like, for instance, where there is a uh, a power source opportunity, then they would be paying uh, more of a premium for that power at that location, and um, you know the license fee uh, which they're paying would would be compensating for that um, for that opportunity. Uh, okay, I'm listening. Okay, so yeah. no, I think I think if, if we what does people what does people think of the three year? rather than three years you mean yeah. maximum three years because if this one is for 2022 and then there's elections anyway and then it's three years isn't it now i think the start i'll pick up what tams is saying about loss of potential knowledge and um, people don't really stand or get re-elected but but that's um, the start should advise of those previous concerns. And also my concern with this is that it is progressing it to be even more commercially minded. So we don't necessarily want to be that we put before the Mount versus Bob Metallic. We want the and new businesses who want to give things a go. Yeah. And rather than like this weighted tender model, they'll look at this and just think it's too hard. And it's yeah, it just concerns me that we'll we've been through that with the information centre. Mm -hmm. Well, although the, the decision's been made at the council level, so yeah. we can either go along with it or we get left behind. Yeah. Any I decisions. think we do need to put a recommendation. But what, what also would worry me if I was an operator, one year is not a lot if you think of Fong Matar, because they're only going to come really in the summer. Yeah, I agree they're with not, So therefore, you know, if I'm going to go to all this expense of getting a coffee cart and you know they're not cheap mm -hmm. i would want more certainty than one year oh, that's, what so that's saying. why i think three years if they if they opt out and they find it's not viable then they quit their licensee and it goes back into the pool i don't know yeah. is that how it works Derek? Uh, yeah I, I think you've got that fairly well synopsized yes so there's, there's really no, you know, they, they've got a guarantee of three years, or if it's not viable, they'll pull out. Derek, we raised this issue when we were at the uh, council too, that uh, the local business people who pay uh, their rates and you know, got bricks and mortar don't want to see a whole lot of commercial stuff landing on the beachfront to take their business away. 
and they said in the summer it's that busy, it doesn't matter, but in winter it does. Um, so, operating this, yes. the operation of this is for three full years. Is that correct? That's correct, yes. Right. So, you just got to be mindful of that. There is a, a little bit of a, a, a backlash sometimes. Very few of them come here. Yeah, I think the market forces would be uh, no, there's coming. Yeah, but if they're paying big money, yeah. That one will operate. Yeah. Anyway, whatever you want, we'll. Okay, can you bring up the recommendations and anything? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Okay. So there's no of us. So we've got made some alterations, added some in, added some numbers. Yeah. Um, so I'll move that in bulk. Second. Second by K. And I'll put it to the vote. All those in favour? Uh, yes. So, okay. Derek, I'm just wanting to get this straight. So, they, the board can approve the site, but they can only recommend back to council the term? Uh, that's correct. So, um, exactly all of that stuff which is in the in, in the table, that's Fong Matar, that's what they want. Uh, that would be approved by council. In terms of the term, uh, the, that's where I was coming back to. That's to say. Sorry, Derek, it's, Derek, it's Rex here. Can I just, because currently, as the resolution has just been passed, as the board have approved it, are you saying that they need to recommend the council to approve the site? Uh, well, so the, no, the way that works is that the community board minutes go up to the council for, uh, for endorsement, correct? Yeah. So no one's going to fiddle with the Fong uh, recommendations. Council won't fiddle with those. So those will get approved. This is about delegations, Derek. It's not about fiddling with resolutions. Does the board have the delegation to approve the time sites available for licensed commercial operators? Yes. OK, so that's fine. But they don't have the delegation to approve the term of the agreements? I don't think so, no. Okay, so that's, I'm just making sure you know, we've got clarity around the decision making process. So that, that that's satisfies me. That's good. That's good. Yeah, so you can make side three years and we've got to go and quite a bit the table. Well, well council has to consider that and decide whether to go with three or not. Yeah, like so you, you and Gary have to take that to council. Well, we'll go on the staff report. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Good right now, thank you. Thanks, Derek. Thank you, board. Appreciate your time. Okay, and now we come to the uh, work program, and I will move that and someone like to second it. Second it by Tamsin, and I'll open it up for discussion. So just moving through one at a time. Good morning, Bruce. Could be a couple of your items here. So we'll start on the first page or anything there. Bruce, can you just explain to me why the Mayanawano Cycle Pedestrian Access Way has only spent $2,000, but now it's saying the budget may not be sufficient? Um, yes, I, so I'm happy to, um, to defer to Andrew Bowden to get into any of the detail um, that you're querying for Terry. But I imagine as the work's being done, this initial kind of uh, planning and concept work, that's where they're starting to wonder whether whether the budget will be sufficient for what um, what the board are looking to achieve. And um, and again, I see Andrew's just popped up, so I'm happy to hand over to Andrew if you can provide any more detail on that, Andrew. Yeah, the, uh, through the chair. No, sorry, good morning, everyone. Uh, morning, Andrew. Through the chair, um, the initial review of the... Uh, quantum of the scope is currently under review and um, as a, a bit of a heads up really um, it is believed that the the budget may be very tight at the moment um, I couldn't confirm one way or the other whether we'll exceed it but um, it might be likely I don't know how that yeah. Is not possible to ascertain the cost and then figure out whether it's going to exceed the budget or not. 
yeah, we're still looking at the design at the moment. Um, and uh, uh, my latest advice is that um, uh, the budget may be insufficient. Uh, there have been uh, increases in material costs over the past uh, six months, and uh, we may be a casual thing of that. Andrew, the um, the budget was the the, the um, trial was spent by or back in 2010, but also uh, Ross Ashby spent it as a hog and calf with a wooden edge, um, so the materials aren't. Uh, like concrete or anything like that, so it's pretty available. He also said he had done the iwi and um, dock discussions that had been signed off, and yet they still show that the program is still waiting for those things to happen. It seems to me that we don't have to have a connect somewhere here that people are giving you that information because it's, I need um, to look in, through the chair. I need to look into that, Terry, and come back to you. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, through the chair, just on that item, uh, I would definitely expect after the four months that there would at least be a construction detail and that there would be a price associated to that. So um, are we able to see what's being designed at the moment and what the current quantified costs are? Uh, I haven't got that with me at the moment, but I can find it. Okay, thank you. Can you send that out to us, thanks, Andrew? Yes, I can. Uh, I can. Okay. Right. Anything else on that page there? Just in relation, Bruce, to the CCTV cameras, it shows here November the 30th, 2022. Is that a misprint? Should be 2021. Yeah, that's what we thought. Great. Right. With, the C with the CCTV cameras, um, with the current lockdown in the Waikato, the technicians cannot enter Whangamataar at the moment. Um, as soon as uh, they are relaxed in the Waikato, they'll come across and finish the work. That is the current status of that project. If we weren't in, if Hamilton wasn't in um, level three lockdown, if it was in level two, uh, the project would have been finished by now. Thank you. Uh, this one's for Lou, but Lou's not here. Um, he's uh, obviously got some work planned through the parks and reserves for um, bench tables and picnic tables and all that. Have we got a list of what he wants to do there, uh, Arnie? Does he give us a list on what his plans are? Derek may have that list. Um, yeah, because we've given them two or three times uh, ones that we feel need to be done. I just don't know where they fit on that list, that's all. Does he give that list to you? No, it would be Derek's team. So Derek's team. Okay. Follow up with Derek's team. We'll follow up with Derek. Derek's off the line now, but we'll double check with Derek on that list to make sure it's moving ahead as per uh, the board expectations. Where, where are we at with the dock decision? Do you know for the board walk? I see it was supposed to be in October. Is that right? Okay, I can I can uh, confirm quite a few things. On the 22nd of October, we received uh, the uh, hearing report recommendations signed off by DOC on the 22nd, albeit a couple of months later than our expectations. Within that uh, report were five recommendations that um, had to be um, completed. Three of them are TCDC actions, two of them are DOC actions. Uh, two of the uh, recommendations, which is um, to provide an updated application for stage one, uh, will be, that information will be completed by the end of business today. Okay. Um, the other two, uh, the other one rather, is an updated cultural heritage assessment, which I'm expecting uh, to be completed by the 
18th of this month. Uh, we also have, um, and I've discussed this with Eileen, uh, we have to meet with Doc and the Surf Life Saving Club um, to discuss how the boardwalk may or may not affect their operations. And the last one for Doc is to put the information uh, that we'll be issuing to them on their website. So I am hopeful, and I'll stress the word hopeful, uh, that um, by the end of this month, November, uh, we'll have put in an updated application as required by DOC. How long that will take DOC to review and come back to us, I've yet to find out. And um, But I'm on to it um, as one of my highest priority items at the moment. Andrew, I'm quite interested that you're saying the surf club. Yes, because... How do they, how do they feature into this extension of the boardwalk? The boardwalk... Uh, They've got their boardwalk. The boardwalk close to, that we're talking about, um, okay, is at the... It goes between Low Street and Graham Street, and the yeah. Low Street end is close to the Surf Life Saving Club. Right. Okay, no, well, have, have those discussions with Surf Club. I was hoping that the Surf Club activities wouldn't be impacted by the, the boardwalk because it's ground level. If they want to um, have marquees and things to have surf carnivals, I'm sure they can still work around it anyway. Have, have those discussions. Hopefully, that's not a train stop. I should. I share those thoughts. Ken. Okay. Okay. Andrew, what's your feeling with Doc? Do you feeling that the the the, um, the way is there, or are you feeling that there's still going to be some hoops to jump through? I don't know, Terry. To be honest with you, um, I have uh, recently um, got a um, good rapport with oh, the conce the concession person oh, I'm no, dealing with. Sorry, I've just muted Lorna. Um, uh, I am really confident, but um, having experienced uh, quite a significant delay with Doc um, up to now, um, I am uh, they're very, um, very slow to respond. But um, yeah. I think building those relationships is key, Andrew. Um, so um, I strongly endorse that approach. Um, that, yeah. That's the way you get things going. Um, a certain level of diplomacy is needed, Ken, um, because um, there's no other way. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thanks for the update. You're welcome. They come to the next page. Island View. Island View. Who's where it is? Yes. Island View. Yep. So, um, so it looks like the uh, surface has been confirmed as chip seal will be the preferred surface for that. Uh, and as I understand it, procurement is the next step, which the team are busy with at the moment. Bruce, we were told that the uh, Gobi Stone was a better deal because you didn't have to put down the foundation and you could ride over it. Why is it moved to Chips Hill? Uh, I don't have that level of detail. Sorry, Terry. All I have is that, and I see they looked at a number of different surfaces, surfaces including the Gobi block. Um, but yeah, I don't know the detail, but basically the team are saying the Chips Hill is recommended. Uh, can I respond to that, Terry? Yeah. The, the Gobi block is very expensive. In comparison with chip seal. Very it's, it's even, uh, it's even cheaper. I was going to say, to me, grass for freedom camping is a lot cheaper than chip seal. Um, Two hundred and eight thousand is a hell of a lot of money for a car park. For well, for freedom camping. 
when all we ever had anywhere else than a camping ground is grass. I don't know why we have to go to all this fancy chip seal and everything. Can somebody explain that to me? <laughs> I think what it is, Kay, is that the staff are recommending what is going to be the best option, long term, lowest cost, that's going to provide the best level of service out there. Uh, as we know, and again, I'm not, you know, I've been to the site, but I'm not intimately familiar with it as you are. But as we know, like at Williamson Park, we had a number of issues around vehicles on grass. Um, you know, it kills the grass. Then you get a lot of uh, wind blown sand moving around and the surface deteriorates. So to avoid something similar to that, chip seal as a way to to really make sure that it's um, going to stand up to that that uh, that vehicle loading which can be quite frequent you know during the summer when the conditions are dry so again Kay, the, the team will be doing what they believe is the best uh, for the area for the community over the long term can I ask has the sorry has the consultation with neighboring properties taken place uh, I don't know sorry Ken yeah I haven't got oh, yeah. that detail. Uh, Eileen, um, we have. Uh, I don't know, AJ. I haven't had an update from AJ. That's the next thing th that will be done very shortly. I think we've got the names of everyone. Well, there's only two permanent, so I don't know how you're going to get the rest because they're all in lockdown. <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, thanks for that, Nate. Anything else? Oh, sorry. Um, Streetlight improvements um, talks about the list being finalised at this meeting. There's nothing on the agenda. I had heard about problems getting the standards. Is that still the case, or has that changed? Uh, that that is the case, and that's a, that's a error. Apologies about that um, input at the November meeting on that project. That's just a um, that that's incorrect. So um, so yeah, we're not looking for input at this meeting. But you were also correct, Ken, that yeah, there is a delay on trying to get those. Um, uh, those poles into the country for streetlights. So yes, yeah, so it's a post-Christmas um, project, that one. Terry, uh, can I just talk about the nip curb, uh, Bruce, please? Sure. Oh, sorry, we've got a separate report on that. Can we talk about it then? Okay. Anything else on that page? Something that's not on the page, Bruce, which I was hoping might have been, is the project to investigate the um, clip on to the bridge and the track out to the mountain bike track. So I was hoping I would have seen it on the agenda. Can someone give an update on what's happening there? I, I haven't got an update on that, Ken, but we can add it to those operational projects, um, all the ones that Eileen's got at the bottom of the, um, of the work program so that we can provide an update each meeting for you if that's useful. That would be really good, thank you. Okay. Okay. Anything else on the capex before we move to the opex? Um, oh, we have to go down to the toilets. Uh, be, uh, can we go to the couple of new beach road? Yeah, we can go to the beach road toilet. Yeah. Beach road toilet, Andrew. Is there any report on that? Um, not at the moment. Okay. Um. I need to speak to Andrew Hartley about that. But the I think the location has been confirmed following your visit to site um, about, was it last month? Um, so yeah. I'm, I'm not quite sure who that is at the moment, but it's, um, it's, it's current at the moment. Cool, thank you. I see that um, three projects here have got Theory consultation has been impacted by lockdown. What's the issue there? I think, uh, Eileen, do you want to comment on that? Uh, no, we just had no response from me. We, um, I, AJ was making contact again with them, but I haven't heard from, haven't had an update from AJ. So it's not really true to say it's because of lockdown. It's just lack of communication. Well, who would you deal with normally here? Uh, our EWI liaison officer provided us with four different EWI that we need to consult with. Are they based in Auckland? I'm not sure where they're based. Four different EWI. Okay. So, uh, so the project manager has got all those details and he's making the contact. Yeah, I mean, we need to understand this because when you talked to Frank Thorne, he was telling the theory that uh, mm -hmm. out here was a particular EWI where, where those toilets were. 
They went uh, Nadi Peru, they went Nadi Maru, they went Nadi Temeterail, they were, um, well, whoever they were. So why is that for iwi? You, you make a discussion over three toilets in one particular area. We were given the contact details from our iwi liaisons for whatever Frank's given us, that is what we run with. Great. Oh, we look forward to some progress there. Oh, the Island View one, have they made a decision yet on whether they're going to shift at 30 metres or is it staying where it is? Uh, it will move slightly, okay, uh, above the coastal inundation line that Jamie Boyle has established, uh, similarly for the car park as well. So a site meeting has been held and the location will move slightly, but not by 30 metres. Okay. So now, with that car park, while we, we're on that, is that still going to be ripped up, like Jamie was saying, because of the water line or whatever? Because they've only just resealed it last year. The beginning of the year, it was all resealed. So when you talk about the Island View car park, I'm just presuming you're talking about the Freedom Camping Park, not yeah. actually the car park. Is that I'm, correct? I'm only talking about the new uh, car park for Freedom Campers that's above the yeah. existing. Cool. I, I'm not aware. Uh, I'm not aware that we're ripping up proposing to rip up the existing car park. Thank you very much, because that horrified me when you mentioned that. I don't think we've got the budget to do that, and to we've be quite honest with you. No, we don't, we don't need anything added to the budget to rip up car park. No. Um, through the chair, yeah. I'm just concerned that we seem to finalise design prior to um, going to consultation. When I think the purpose of consultation is to incorporate feedback within the design. It's a similar process to the boardwalk. It's like a, when we finalise it first, we're missing it, all that important information that we need to incorporate. Well, we finalised the, we finalised the design or a, a preliminary concept design first, so we can show uh, the adjacent neighbours what we're proposing and get their feedback. Is it similar to the only Manor one? <laughs> um, in what way, Kay? Well, you know, aesthetically pleasing, whatever they call it. No. Not just a concrete block. That will be gross. It will be um, a variation on the theme that we have across the whole Coromandel district. In other oh. words, if you go from um, Onimana to Pepe Reserve in Tairua to the one in Fongapoa, um, they all are a variation on the theme. And traditionally, we use the same contractor to do the work. Oh. So in a oh. nutshell, Yes. But there's a difference between taking the stakeholders on the journey and then showing them what's already been designed and what is going to happen. So I think if we perhaps changed tack with some of these projects and engaged our stakeholders early and let them feed into the design, we might get more buy-in. I don't agree with that. Probably take longer. I'm not sure some of the stakeholders would be in. I think a better, um, a better, a more expedient way of managing the initial stages of the project are to come up with a preliminary design that is flexible and uh, involve the local stakeholders then. And make some tweaks, but if you expect um, 
neighbours to uh, provide uh, design input, we could be waiting for the whole 12 months. So I, I would prefer that we come up with an initial concept. This is, not, this is not unusual. Initial concept and then um, share that with the stakeholders, see what response we get back and and um, and then um, um, solidify it into something that is um, cost effective and within the parameters of the um, design that we run at, normally roll out for these toilets. Well, I look forward to the experience, but there's a demonstration of the fact that when we design things and then go out for consultation, it sits within that consultation process yeah. and the projects fail and nothing gets done. So, right. My projects don't fail. Well, we look forward to that. <laughs> Andrew? Okay, so moving on, is there anything in the OPEX we want to talk about? Yeah, I'd like to raise, if I can, through the chair, the Wainawatu Harbour Cleanup. Yeah. Who's running that, Andrew, or Bruce? Uh, no, I don't believe I don't believe Andrew's running that one. Uh, Eileen might be able to provide a bit more information on that one. Uh, no, all I know is with community facilities, Lou was looking at that. That'll be local local field rep Lou Mackwell on that one. So the idea of the clean up is not to just plant trees around it and hide it, which is what those recommending. I would have thought the idea is to take all the crap away and grass it like they've done the rest of it. Why would they decide to plant trees around there? Now they're saying the access is difficult, the access is not difficult, there's access through the, um, we took marukas and, and diggers through the um, concrete plant there, they've got a gate that opens up into there, so you have to go along the path. I just don't follow why somebody's decided this is an easy way out, to plant some trees and leave it go. But uh, You might know a bit more about this one than I do, Terry, but where did this project get initiated from? This initiated after the mangroves were pushed, it, uh, dumped on top there and, and pushed into the ground and grassed over. That regional council, Lou, and uh, even EPL said that they should work together and clean that area up because the council, the TCDC had done one side of the footpath and the regional council hadn't done the other side. So they said adding some input to it and they would get this done in 1919, oh, 2019, but it's drifted on a bit. So I'd like to see that done. There, there was a group prepared to do it. Uh, Dean Allen knows clearly how it all works. I think you know where Dean Allen sits now, so he's easy to talk to. Yep. Okay, well, well, I'll follow up and work out who's leading the project, if it's a regional council, if it's us, if it's a community group, and what exactly our role in there is, because I can see that we've done the, the plant pest control work. Um, but I'll, I'll circle back to, um, to discuss with Derek and Lou and just see where things are at with that one and who's, who's driving it to make sure it happens. Make well, sure it happens would be fantastic, thank you. I think the main thing is that we don't want anything planted there just to screen off the mess. We'd rather have the mess cleaned up. Sure. Understand. Okay, is there anything else on the work program? Well, I don't think we've got many things done, but um, again, it concerns me that we're sitting here for six weeks and going to wait till February. Bruce, it does seem to be not a lot of action going on in the work program. Is, is, is it because of COVID or are we just still struggling to get things done? Uh, there's a number of challenges, Terry. I'd say that things are happening, so I think it's actually um, things are moving better than what you may feel after running through the, um, the program, because obviously we we focus and highlight on uh, on the things which aren't going well, which is understandable, makes sense. Um, but obviously, as, you, as, you, as you've said, there are some challenges around COVID and around supply of materials and contractors and even staff, you know, such as Andrew, who's locked down in Auckland. You know, you can still work remotely, obviously, as we are now, but it does make things a little bit more challenging and slow things down. So um, there's a number of challenges that we've got. But, um, but like I say, I don't think things are probably as bad as what you might feel after working through that work program. Okay, so do we have a mover for this? Oh, Move by Kay, seconded by Tamsin. All those in favour? Against, carried.
Right, moving on to item 3.2, the footpath construction. So we have the report there. Um, so I'll open it up for discussion. Will you begin to talk about that? Okay, well, I'll, I'll kick off. Um, two, two aspects here. Um, I see that Penny Mower, the suggestion is um, the footpath beyond the northern side of Penny Mower. Um, the board's view is that it would be better to be on the southern side, so it links in with the footpath. Uh, is it Tangaroa? Tangaroa. Coming along Tangaroa, turn left onto the stone footpath um, on Hinimara and then head on down to um, Rangi. Um, having to cross the road there doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. So, is that an issue there, James? Uh, no, uh, good morning, board. No, that's not a problem at all. That's just that was a misunderstanding um, with uh, the direction because it was the, it said about the power poles uh, to be on the same side as the power poles. So that's what I thought you meant by that. So I can I can change that quite easily. Yeah, and it probably doesn't need to go uh, for that last little section down to the beach. It can just okay. come along Tangara, hook left, and continue along. And so that'd be a lower cost taking okay. sure. a third of the length off there. Um, yeah. So the other one is Williamson. Um, you know, ideally the board would like to have seen uh, a footpath along one side of the the uh, Williamson. Road, which uh, obviously is impossible for budgetary constraints. Um, I personally would support taking it um, down to Bologna, um, which is the first little section, but I don't see a lot of value in continuing down opposite Bell Road, um, which is, comes into the one of the pedestrian access into the golf course. It's not a main access to the golf course, doesn't get used much at all. And that's that stopping there doesn't seem to make any sense. If you continued further down, ideally down to Otaru, I know the money's not there at this stage, but um, either continue it on further or just do that first section for the stage, depending on how the budgets are. Okay, sure. We can certainly do the design down to Otaru, have a look at getting that design done. Yeah, yeah. If that's, if that's something you want to extend for maybe the, you know, the 22, 23 financial year. Yeah, yeah it'd, be a, it'd be a longer term thing taking it sure. right through. My, yeah. my concern, James, is the fact that you've got it going to that walkway into the golf course, which is yeah. one of the most dangerous holes if people are going to use that as an access. Okay. Is it because it comes out into the middle of a fairway? Oh, does it? Okay. Yeah. So, so it seems a bit silly to put a footpath to that walkway and ex hope people will go down it. Because that's not what the golf course would want. Okay. Yeah. So Bologna Road makes sense, or yeah. down to Otago. Yeah. Design to Otago, like you're going to do, and you yeah. can see where the money is. Just see where the money goes. But if you do that first section through to Bologna and um, look at a um, truncated hilly um at the stage of this, just see how the money goes. Sure. Sounds good. Any other comments? So, how do we have to word this then? Um, reflect that discussion. I can update the table. Okay, if you could update the table to reflect. Yeah. Um, and then we'll, we'll move option one as modified. By Esther to reflect that discussion. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Someone like to move that? I'll move that. Okay. Seconded by Dave. All those in favour? Aye. Against? Carried. Now we come to the NICU program. Item 3.3. Yeah. Can, uh, can I through the chair? Yeah. So uh, I can see what you're trying to do there with. Um, um, with Baratov. The budget is 342000 um, Are you concerned that you can't get to the whole road with that money? Um, I 
I'm pretty sure it looks like we should be able to, and uh, the the other section that is identified in the orange uh, was where they were confident that there may be some leftover over funds to proceed with that extension, uh, was my understanding. It's quite a lot of money, isn't it, James? You know, yes. 342000 to put a nip curb on the road there. Um, I would expect to get some more yardage out of it. Um, yes. Um, so what are you waiting for? You're waiting for that tender to come through to see whether you can... And see how much money's left over. Right, yeah. So what sort of metre rate, what's the metre rate on that, do you know? I, I, I'm sorry, I do not know, Terry. Must be pretty bad. Man, the, the, the yep. spend, like when we went back to 2016, 17, we were getting four or five streets done at the time, and uh, this seems to be yeah. soaking it up like you wouldn't believe it, so. I think the, I was talking to uh, Pinnacles yesterday, and they were talking about how much uh, in some materials, the cost has gone up 20% in the last six months. So, quite significant. Significant, all right. Um, okay, well, hope you get the best you can out of the 342,000. Thank you very much. A lot of money for one street. So, you, you're saying, James, that um, there is a chance that the money might be enough to do all of Barrett so Yes, that's correct. That was the understanding um, the, uh, that I got from Pinnacles. Okay, so if we, yeah. if we approve option one, um, we don't need to state that you'll just spend the money and go for as far as you can with it. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you want to move option one, Terry? I'll move option one. I'll oh, see. Okay. Second by Dave. Okay, so we're going for option one, and uh, fingers crossed we can do the whole road. So, all those in favour? Aye. Uh, it's carried. Thank you, James. That's so, great. Thank you very much, Board. Thank you. Now, come on to action schedule. So, we've got here online. I wonder if we should talk about the mountain bike track now or like when you're on uh, Yeah, we can do it under the action schedule. While, we, while it's there, um, Ed, are you still there? Still, still, no, it's still in the meeting. Um, you might just. I sent a message, so. Okay, well, in the meantime, is there anything else in the action schedule people well, need to have a discussion on that we have already talked about? Do we know what's happening with the dump station? Um, well, that's under the... I mean, we had a site visit and everything. Yes. That's here. It's under the first one on the... Yeah, the first one there. It's a bit different to the toilets, but I suppose it falls under that regime. Well, it was linked to it, although it probably should be at the same time. Like when are we going to get the report for that? Will it be next year, I suppose? Uh, they were going to report that to us. Well, it's not today, so the answer is yes. Is Bruce there? Yes, I'm here. Uh, just uh, wondering what the progress with the dump station is. Um, I know it was being looked at in conjunction with the Martin Road toilets. Do you have any update there? I don't have an update, sorry. Yeah, the project manager who's working on that, I'll try and track down an update from him, but he is, um, he has got a number of projects on and we're pushing him to um, to get those other ones done as well. So again, we've got that challenge of trying to prioritise across the range of projects of what we want, really want to get done before Christmas. So, okay. but I'll, I will realise it won't be done before Christmas, but is yeah. there a chance we could have an email of just um, yeah. Yep, I'll find out. I'll get an update from him and then we'll get that through to the board. It, it is quite important, Bruce, because if we do get an influx of motorhomes through the summer, that thing leaks like crazy. The water goes all over the footpath and those kids are walking to that skate park and I hate seeing them walking through that water. Yeah, and I understand it is an issue and I know that... Um, that Derek's contractors have to work pretty hard to keep that thing um, working. So I think we all understand 
the desire to get it re renewed and replaced uh, with something a lot better. Uh, so I'll, I'll get an update from the project manager and I'll flick that out to the board. Can I just raise through the chair the um, the issue at Otahu regarding the use of power power? Yeah. So we've got a situation on Otahu, which is an estuary down the other end of town, as you all know. It's got a, a sign up there saying no jet skiing, no um, no water skiing. And yet uh, the rules of WRC is that you can use a jet ski or, or um, to only at five knots to power out through there to go out the ocean. So there's been a request from a, uh, a resident with a jet ski to, to launch it there, but he won't do it until he's got clearance that the sign that's up there that says you can't do it allows him to do it. So I actually um, sent Eileen a, a little message about it, and I just wonder if Eileen, if there's any further discovery. And I know I spoke with Dean with about it on Friday. Um, need to do some historical research because there would be a reason why that sign was put up. Um, there, I talked to previous area managers, and uh, they said there was a report from WRC on Otago Estuary, which possibly was the reason why it was put up, was from this report. So I'm still researching into finding that report and having a look. Um, also, that address is 167, 157 KY, which is all part of the Otago Historic Reserve. So there could be some culturally sensitive reason as well. So I just need to work through that and come back to you. So the rules from WRC are clear that you can do that. So but you still want you from the reserve. But you've got to launch from the reserve. So you think it's actually the launching from the reserve that you shoot, not the five knots down the, down the river. Line. But you can launch a boat. But you can launch a boat. Which you can slightly do. Well, we must, what I'm saying is that I need to research it and then find out the reason why it was originally put there. Because well, they just put signs up. But the sign that. says no water skiing or jet skiing. So that's true. You're not allowed to water ski up there no. because that's not five knots. And you're not allowed to jet ski up there because that's not five knots, but you can use a jet ski or a powered boat to do five knots out through the entrance into the ocean. So it's about transporting from one to the other. So the sign's not wrong, it's just it's not correct in saying you can use a powered craft at five knots to get out through the heads. So once again, I need to do that research first. Okay. But signs do go up around from the tide without anybody knowing anything about it. So I mean, you only have to look at that three and one. It's a control one. Yeah, no. Okay, so I'm undertaken to find the reason for it, and if there's no justification for having it there, it'll be taken down. Mm -hmm. Okay, so right yeah. here. Yep, thank you. Um, the information centre. Information centre, yes. Um, is Lorna able to give us an update on, because um, board members weren't at the council meeting, uh, about the uh, successful expression of interest for the information centre and under what terms it's operating? Is it Kirsten or Lorna? Lorna's online. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I was on a call. Can you just ask, okay. um, Rick, ask the question again? Okay, Lorna, um, just in terms of the uh, information centre in Whangamata, uh, I know the decision was made at the council meeting and I, I heard that not all board members were privy to that. Can you just outline who the new operator is and what terms and conditions they're operating under? Uh, it's, it's Diana Smith and they're sitting, uh, is, is, was the applicant and a, a trust is being formed. Um, with some uh, people that she is working with. Uh, we're just working through that contract at the moment and uh, that will, uh, uh, they're looking to start um, operating from... Today. <laughs> from today, yes. Yeah, we saw the doors were open this morning, so yeah, no, that's good. They have information here that aren't running for summer. Um, yeah, so at some stage of... Uh, Kirsten could just uh, let the board know what those um, conditions of contract are, etc. 
Yep, absolutely. We, we'll share the service level agreements. Um, they're sent through to all the elected members to have a look at as an FYI. Uh, and we will invite them, them to come and present to the board just to introduce themselves in the public forum and, and talk about um, what, they're, what they're going to be doing there. That'd be great. Thank you, Lorna. Anything else? Um, was see. Ed, Ed, are you back? Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. It's showing us in the meeting, but he must have stepped away from his desk. Okay, if you can see his name pop up, we can come back to him after the meeting's reports. Okay, so I'll move the that item. Someone like to send it. They can send by K. All those favour. No, oh, it's carried. Now we come to members' reports. Tanzan. Oh, um, the last month has only been a national council meeting, the national council strategy day. I'm also sitting on the national council future for local government subgroup, feeding through information to national council um, and. That is about all I have to report. Lots of three orders conversations. Three, well, we won't mention the three orders. Yeah. No. Dave. Um, Terry, no, Terry, you'll speak on the bike one, which. Hey, you can speak from there. Um, we walked the area the other day with Blake out um, to see the most feasible. Oh, sorry, it's online too. Oh, it's high end. So. Um, Good morning, board. Hi. There might be an opportunity, but Ed, can you just, uh, before Dave continues, just give an update from your perspective of what's happening with the investigations into the bridge and the path, path out to the Mount Bike Park? Yes, no problem at all. I got an email from uh, Terry last week about their most recent uh, walkthrough and finding. What I'm going to be doing is trying to organise a Teams meeting uh, between the um, Terry's group and Pinnacles. Pinnacles have uh, started their assessment on the possibility of clip-on for the bridge. Uh, we've identified that there may be some issues, not with, in particular with the bridge, but in providing sufficient width for a cycle path access to the clip-ons. Uh, this will be along the um, the uh, approach to the um, the bridge. The problem there is that any widening that's needed would be in uh, tidal waters in an estuary. Uh, that then comes into all sorts of issues with um, the regional council and resource consent. So that generates a significant risk to the the proposal uh, that we haven't been able to to quantify yet. Um, the actual clip-ons themselves um, should be all right, we understand, uh, but uh, that's down to a, a structural engineer to actually do the final assessment on. Um, what we've also identified is that, uh, I think as James mentioned earlier, material costs are increasing significantly. James quoted a 20% increase in uh, costs for material. We have found that in two recent tenders, uh, we've had a, a cost increase of between 20 and 25 percent in all concrete products. Uh, and obviously, uh, unless we go to a hogging cycle path, uh, we're fairly well tied with uh, a concrete cycle path all the way through, which may have a, a knock on effect on the budget required for the project. Um, as I say, the intention now is to, to get a Teams meeting together, uh, as uh, I'm hoping probably next week, uh, once Pinnacles have finalised their initial assessment on the bridge, and get a discussion going on what is, uh, what could potentially be feasible, what may not be feasible, and uh, the risks that we've identified so far. Thank you. Any questions for you? Is it possible to make the clip on then go a bit further? 
in some form onto that grass verge that you're because I can't um, realize where you're talking about. But the, isn't it possible to sort of do a, a bit of a bridge approach? It is possible to do some form of raised causeway that um, that would have to be piled on either side of the current embankment. That again requires the same form of environmental consent from the regional council. Um, the nature of the work doesn't um, doesn't feature significantly. It's the position of the work um, within the, the the sort of tidal area. Well, regional council are all for encouraging cycle, cycling, um, so hopefully that wouldn't be a. I know there's the cost, but hopefully um, there wouldn't be political opposition. I don't believe the the op there would be any political opposition to it. Um, it's um, it's the resource consent proposals that would be required for it. And that's something that's unfortunately outside of the political scope. Ed, can you just explain uh, the causeway, which is man built um, above the water line? Where does the regional council kick in? At what, at what level? Uh, the regional council would be interested in any form of uh, alteration to that causeway because it is within a tidal area. Essentially, it is a causeway. If we have to provide a cycleway to uh, link into a, the clip-ons on the opposite side to the existing footpath, that would require some form of alteration to the causeway or widening of it. Um, that would then result in the requirement for some form of resource consent. So the widening of it in terms of the path will say a 1.2 metre or 1.3 metre path, it, it, it would fit within the scope. Are they expecting a wider path, are they? They're looking for something that's... I haven't, uh, we haven't discussed the, the actual width of the path with the Regional Council yet. Uh, what we do know is that the, the width of the existing verge there is marginal at least to accommodate a cycle path safely. Um, we may be in a situation where we could do a effectively a boardwalk situation with a cycle path on piles or one side on piles, one side uh, on the existing um, ground. But then again, the piles themselves, because they're within the area of an estuary, they generate environmental concerns and they generate the need for some form of resource consent discussion. You've got to be careful you don't damage any mangroves by putting those piles in. <laughs> All the mud. <laughs> you don't have to comment. Um, <laughs> any further questions for Ed? And we look forward to the meeting when you're ready to Ed anyway. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks, Ed. Thank you. Hey, Dave, sorry for that interruption, but that's all right. Um, so, yeah, so we, just to go on from there, we looked at um, and walked the area, and our suggestion and thoughts were that, in fact, the left hand side right out, as opposed to going across the road and having wide passes and everything like that, um, would, pr would probably be more suitable if we can get approval for it. Um, it, it, some of the areas got footpath there already, and um, it would. Um, the way they're talking, uh, they want to enter in at the very first entrance into the forestry, so it would cut down. We'd have, we wouldn't have to go around to that main area that they were talking about there. Um, I think the other key thing, too, that by we going on the left hand side, we took away the option of going under the road because yeah. we felt it was only too hard to. A bridge too far. So, okay. so you're starting to cross the state highway at the. But we thought at the intersection there where things slow down. Yeah. That there was an opportunity to far safer across there than in the speed area. So. Okay. Um, so that was there. Um, I don't know if you people have heard of it or not, but there's a toes in the water as a group that's started and they've asked me to. Um, run it at the stage in relation to getting funding for wheelchairs, for beach wheelchairs, for people that um, uh, have disabilities so that they can actually get down to the beach and put their feet in the water. 
we've um, looked at um, feasibility and there are a couple of wheelchairs that we can obtain. They're actually Australian made but have a New Zealand agency with big tyres on it, which hopefully if um, we use it uh, both for the wheelchairs and we're also looking at getting some walkers for people that aren't totally disabled but so that they could lean on them and they could take their walkers down and have a seat on them so they can sit and put their feet in the water. Um, we've got another meeting tonight um, in relation to it, but um, we are hoping that possibly we won't have to use mats because of the size of these tyres, but that would require tests on the beach. The area that we're looking at is um, the access to the beach would be to the right hand side of the surf club where you've got the tables that are covered in. There's a, a ramp that goes down there which hasn't got such a bad um, angle on it and it could pretty easily be altered. So um, Eileen has kindly sent the email on to property and to uh, community uh, facilities asking them whether it's possible that we use that. We've heard nothing back from that that went out about 10 days ago, 12 days ago, um, but there's still no reply from that. Um, so basically, uh, the people um, have been making donations for it, and it's hoped that we might get it up and running in a fairly short time, but it will be dependent. Waihi Beach has done it successfully, but they had to spend $40,000 on max um, to be used to get the people down to the water. Um, but with these wheels that we're using, because they're so large, um, it's hoped that we might get away without having to do that. So. Um, the community patrol meeting I attended that, and they were thankful for uh, the uh, money that they had received uh, for that, and they were happy. And also, I'd like to thank um, the work that's done at the entrance to the War Memorial Hall to do it the same as the RSA where cars can actually enter into the War Memorial Hall without um, scraping on the bottom. It was very noticeable when we did the flu inoculations there that people's cars, late model cars, were, were heading on the bottom and must have done some damage to some vehicles. But um, now it's, it's very smooth, the same as what it is for the RSA entrance. So good. thank you for that. That's me. Okay, thank you. Uh, a couple of things from me. Um, I've been in conversation with the Diana Avenue residents, as we heard earlier today, so I'm sending them there. Last Sunday, I went along to the uh, road show that was in the Memorial Hall, or was it the Sunday before? Um, and the yeah, Sunday before, and the um, Presentation was well received. Unfortunately, there are only about 30 people there. Um, I went along a little bit later. It did clash with the All Black uh, test, which may have resulted in some people not being there. But also, a lot of the properties that are potentially affected are owned by people that are in the areas under lockdown. So, I understand that Council is going to put a presentation up on their website um, so that uh, people can um, see that presentation if they weren't at that meeting. Um, yeah, I don't know if that's been done yet. We don't know. Um, but they said it should be within the next uh, fortnight. So they had maps here of um, potential impacts and um, timelines, etc. And we were having given feedback, etc., from um, that discussion. The other thing, just to mention that on um, Facebook, there's been a lot of conversation about. Uh, people wanting to have a New Year's Eve function for children, some of them saying they'd be happy to pay, etc. Um, my, oh, I know the board is, well, most um, are supportive of something for the, for the youngsters. We, we went through the exercise and called for express of interest and the cost was prohibitive. Um, but the other thing too, in terms of this year, uh, with the COVID restrictions, if you were going to have um, more than um, more than uh, a certain number, you're likely to go into need to have vaccine certificates, um, depending on the way things pan out. So I doubt if anyone's going to be able to set something up. It would mean that it need to be fenced if you're going to check vaccine certificates. You can't fence it because of the resource consent. So 
Um, until things change, whether the resource we see for Williamson Park or the rules around COVID change, um, I don't see it's possible to have uh, large scale events um, unless they're ticketed and, um, and fenced. So, yeah, I don't think it's possible this year. Okay, Terry? Um, can I, yeah. One of the laws just listed and said that the SMP stuff is up on the website and they're promoting online meetings um, which will run right through the website. Okay, it's on the website. Yep. Excellent. Okay. Uh, yes, just an update on a few points. So we had the opening of the Beverly Hills Water Station. Uh, it's a couple of million dollar project that's part of the water op optimization uh, intended by some board members and the mayor who opened up, the, who unveiled the plaque. Um, so that was good to have in town. There's another water station being constructed out the on the loop road, a small one there for the pause. I'm not too sure how far down the road is, but it's on the plan. I think uh, one of the big things around town is the impact of COVID from the businesses. They are really concerned about a summer without the Auckland is coming down, and uh, that's coming through very strong. That uh, that uh, they would like to see the um, the borders opened up, and uh, it really depends on, I suppose, the COVIDs and the uh, app for the uh, vaccination. But we'll see what happens there. So it's a bit of a, a concern around town when you talk to the people. A representation. We went through this with council, looking at the uh, the full format or layout for the next uh, elections. Um, We've had discussions, we had a very good uh, submission from uh, Joyce Wenzel from Tauru, which was very, very well put together. And it does show that Kent's Coromandel is number one in the country in terms of non-resident rate base. So we've, we've got a big issue there we're trying to work through to improve uh, or change the system so those people can have a, a far more input into uh, to the government's funding agencies around these things, which they're not considered. Um, that representation has been signed off, and I think the only change from last time is that there's a third councillor coming into the Mercury Bay area, um, and uh, Maori awards will be considered in the next election round in 2000. Is it two, next year or was the year uh, next one after that? Yeah. Um, the SFP have heard about the uh, Creative New Zealand Arts Grants uh, meeting was held and applications were $68,000 worth of applications and $18,000 worth of grants. Bon Matar achieved some money um, for the summer program um, and for the arts collective, etc. So they will be pleased. The three waters is an issue, and uh, I think uh, Rex is here today to talk to us about that, so that's fantastic. It's been a, a really much everybody, everybody's radar going forward and concerns about how the government's handled that. Um, and the other one was just a bit about town, but Waka Kotahi's dropped the plans to upgrade Pepe Bridge for another 10 years. We thought it was going to happen in 2023. It looks like it's been pushed out further, so it's a bit of a a disappointment. Okay. 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 Uh, well, I was going to talk about Beverly Water, which was great, uh, and the Facebook New Year, and the library and the swimming pool. Thank you for the uh, grants. And we still have camping concerns ringing me um, where they're going to camp, and I've been assured that the camping ground is going to operate for one more year. So. Half that. Yeah, no, she, what, she assured me that they were going to use quite a bit of the camping ground this year, but next year would be a new um, But it, it does concern me a bit uh, that, that they do go with that Diana um, entrance because that Access 6 walkway is really popular from the beach to town. And I'd just like to see. Um, you know, a bit more consult consultation done about that access six walkway. Okay. Gary, got anything you want to update us on? Well, <laughs> I had the last time I was down in Pontamatar was the 10th of August for the community board meeting then. And I would dearly love to have been down, as would so many of the other people in our ward. 
which uh, Terry has referred to. At the last council meeting, we talked, uh, council voted on the representation uh, situation, and Terry and myself voted against it as a matter of principle, because our ward, which is 70% uh, absentee owners, is not being taken into account in calculations, uh, for example, for the three warders, and also, of course, for the representation, we would should be entitled to a third councillor. But because of the system that exists in legislation, uh, we are ignored. So uh, we, as a matter of principle, raised our flag on that at the last council meeting. Uh, the other thing which you may be aware of, I have been a little bit um, vocal out there trying to encourage the people of Thames Coromandel District to make sure they vaccinate. And I can say that I've had huge contact from people all around the Thames Coromandel District, uh, uh, very upset with what has happened. The councillors passed a resolution at the last council meeting saying that we supported vaccination. And of course, until that happens, uh, we're unsure what's going to take place for our southeastern ward because if we don't get the 70% people who own up properties coming from Waikato, uh, Auckland and other areas, it's going to have a huge effect upon the businesses in this area, as Terry was referring to before. So we'd love to be down as soon as we can, but um, we just don't know what's going to happen. And uh, I just see potential chaos with they having to check vaccination certificates for people trying to get down here. I don't know what's going to take place. So. I can tell you, we want to be down here with you people. We want to support the businesses here and uh, we'll do it when we can. So that's what we're trying to achieve. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. No, we want to see everyone coming down over that new year too. Um, I'm sure the shopkeepers are here. Okay, so um, that's members' reports. I'd like to move those. Moved by Katie, seconded by Tamsin. All those in favour? Aye. Uh, Ian's carried. And that completes the meeting. Thank you very much at 11.41. Thank you. Thank you. And stop recording now, Esther. Yep, I'm quit. Gary, uh, we're going to have a three-word